What's up, people? Episode 201. What's up, TJ? You know, just another day in a beautiful existence. Yeah. We're here. Yeah, you um, are you're at the OC now, right? I am. I'm in Santana now, or Santana as the locals. Yeah, how's, how's shop? It. <laughs> Is it, um, you know, when I went there, I'm like, I need to get a pair of jeans. I need to get a collar, sh- collar like a blue collar shirt. I went to the mall. I'm like, yo, this place is bougie. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I live like right over around the corner from the South Coast Mall. So it's like just nice, quiet. Like, I like it. It's expensive. When people spend money, they, they, they yeah. get quiet. I got lucky. I got lucky. I found a good deal. Like, you know, little house, roommates, all that. Rent's not yeah. super crazy. Landlord's cool. Don't miss the South Bay that much? Yes and no. I don't know. I've always kind of moved around every couple of years. Just, you know, I like to float. I don't ever really feel like I've had like a true like home base. I just kind of like to be other places. So I'll probably move again in a year and then another year after that. <laughs> <laughs> I've honestly been considering van life too. The the true, you know, Eric Zahn, rest in peace, the road dog life. Mm. I want to get a van so I can just wake up anywhere. Do you know guys at road dog, they know no class structure. Like, some of my guys road dog their hobos right and and life steered them that direction but then you got some of these guys they're they're at wall street and they're like oh, to heck with this i'm gonna just get a rv <laughs> i have a friend nico late Le- Le- uh, legon legon that um you know is a, a self-help motivational person um for specifically for men men you know rediscover your masculinity embrace your masculinity be unapologetic about about your masculinity and and and, you know in an old school virtue do things that 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 he believes what real men should do right which some people consider sexist but some people in the old school virtue consider polite right like letting a woman sit down is not now it might be sex. i mean could it be is it both right maybe sexist gets a bad rap Hmm. Right. Maybe, they're, maybe they're both. Yeah. Personal perspective, right? Like that's kind of yeah. all it boils down to is you could say anything, but how someone perceives it is, you know, ultimately how it's what it's going to boil down to. Yeah. Like the movie in uh, Roman Israel, Denzel Washington, when he was like, "Why don't you guys let some of the girls sit down?" And that girl just kind of like, Phew. right? She she. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe that's just that girl is just special, right? You know, I mean. Yeah. She, you could have that feeling and, and not not go off on him the way she did. That was that was some that was ridiculous. So if you if you guys never saw the movie, Roman Israel Esquire is like a um, he's a civil rights attorney and, and a defense attorney, but he also did community functions on, and he was trying to teach uh, you know people in the black community what your rights are if you get stopped by the police this and that and and he's like why don't you guys in the back let some of the sisters sit down and, and what this girl's like i didn't ask you for that she's like she's like it's demeaning she he's like no it's polite she's like it's also sexist he goes no it's polite <laughs> so, <laughs> you know and he's like i'm not your enemy sister and she's like i'm not your sister asshole and he's like and I'm not an asshole, sister. Fuck you! And everyone's just like, whoa. And I'm like, this, this chick snapped. <laughs> good movie, though. Roman Israel. Anyone want to see that? Check it out. Yeah. Absolutely. Shit, what was the last good movie you saw? That was, on, that was in our lightning round. It's been a minute, right? I don't know the last time I actually sat down and watched a whole movie. Mm. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, right? Like a really long time. Oh, what do you- I mean, if you spend time looking at a screen at all, is it just like comedy or whatever? Um, uh, more documentary or whatever rabbit hole finds itself my way. Yeah. Um, it's just more of like, I like information. I like to learn stuff. Yeah. And I always just felt like such a zombie after just like binge watching like a TV show or something that I was like, I got to change this. Like I just can't, you know, melt my brain anymore. I might as well fill it with something useful well if you decide to not have to have kids yeah you got to switch up because like the tv binging trains your mind for for children right like i had a seven-year-old and pup 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 puppy dog just like every and then all of a sudden the same intro and then then the same morning the same intro you feel like you're in this the, the 30 36 chambers of death so <laughs> what's up um yeah, so no, I I can appreciate that because you know you and I we 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 
we can stick our uh, our neck so far in our rabbit hole it could becomes longer it's an awesome <laughs> dude it's an ostrich life for us <laughs> i <laughs> right? definitely live with my head in the sand or yeah. more the clouds honestly but at least my rabbit holes uh, i'll defend myself they come from a, a a personal place and then a curious place right and then you you start to become more suspicious when people be, get defensive when you start just asking questions you're yeah. not you're not drawing your own conclusions. You just ask people get uptight when you start asking questions. Like I can't imagine like the JFK assassination and like anyone that had a question and they're like I'm you know a man just died and you want to sit here and do this. A man died, a man died, right? And that's and that's the non sequitur that steers people away from asking the question. A man died. Yeah. Right? That's non sequitur. Two facts that are illogically connected right so so but that's always been my big one because i'm ex-military you know and i fired um a weapon i'm i'm an expert actually in the m16 and a beretta and that's a semi-automatic weapon and three round burst right and you're telling me this guy had a bolt action rifle and he's firing at a moving target right from left to right about eight, probably about 800 feet away and most expert, the first shot is the most accurate. This guy has a third one, including a headshot, right? And most experts will tell you the best ch chance, that, the best opportunity to take a shot is when the car is coming this way. Because when the car is coming towards you, your target gets bigger. So it just, it, it, I'm like, the shot, the timing by a guy with a bolt action rifle um, who had a military record of not being a good shot. Yeah, does, does, does it not make sense to call bullshit? <laughs> you know, so <laughs> yeah, you you were talking about before you got into the podcast about the inf about the the um the world controlling your information. <laughs> He's like, Jay, do you want this this to be on YouTube? <laughs> do we want to go there? <laughs> ah, no, we could talk uh, about Diddy first. <laughs> honestly, I'm so far removed from the whole Diddy thing, but let's go for it. <laughs> like I, I just know yeah bad stuff well actually we were talking about documentaries and mo movies this and that the last good movie i saw was sound of freedom now sound of freedom a, a lot of people were steered away from it because the guy that created it was like oh he's this um he was accused of being this QAnon guy and like and i'm like so wait a minute what did he do to piss off Hollywood? Because you loved him before. He was in Jennifer Lopez's Enough, right? He's in all these movies, all these TV shows. And I'm like, wait, what did he say for you guys to to look for his worst moment? Told the truth. He told the truth. That's and simple. And the movie was about human trafficking. The, uh, um, ch specifically child trafficking. And one of the biggest through lines of the movie was he said that, I don't know the percentage of it that went up, but it was like, 220 percent it's it's like the the numbers of incidents of, of trafficking and, and stealing basically stealing kids and he said it's already passed the drug trade and it's gonna uh, pass at some point past the arms trade it's, it's going to and and the reason is you can use drugs one time but you know the, these sick people can use kids multiple times for like a 10-year period so you know and for anyone who didn't see the movie, it's basically about a Homeland Security agent that his only job was to bust pedophiles, right? And um, sooner or later, when you when you bust a pedophile, you get a search warrant, you start looking around his guy's house, and you and you become sick. And so his partner's like, I can't do this anymore. And he's like, well, that's the job. And he's like, well, how many people have you, how many pedos have you busted? He says, 288. And he's like, how many kids have you brought back alive? And it's like, and he's like, yeah, it's a messed up world, <laughs> right? So, and no one, and the reason why I'm even bringing this up and talking a lot is because pedos are a dime a dozen. I know it's a, 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 a hard for us to acknowledge that. There are, there are so many of them. And in fact, the biggest consumer of trafficking is the United States of America. So we have plenty here. And busting pedos, you can make a career doing that. And I think I would do better than him. I could probably, I could probably bust more than 288. <laughs> you know, I think we can get 50 in the South Bay alone. So, um, but the point is, if you don't bust the traffickers, what's the point? You know, 
And, and I, I was trying to use that. Uh, I was talking way too much because I was trying to use that for to, to segue. No, the, the, well, the P Diddy it's, thing. Um, well, uh, dude, there's so many levels to that, though. Of like, what actually constitutes, like, why why children, like, why human trafficking, why this, why that. <sighs> so, there's this whole like spiritual science that exists that basically hides behind the mask of quantum physics right like this whole cern particle accelerator is like a part of it there's all these different things that are starting to kind of come out to light through quantum physics that people have known about for much 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 longer so why kids right well in terms of like a spiritual sense kids are like purity they are just like at that most naturally connected state because they haven't had all the like bullshit of life to kind of like jade them and like mm -hmm. block that like natural flow of like, you know, untainted. Yeah, exactly. So that's why they go after kids, because when they're super connected, they're pure. And, you know, the whole I mean, everyone's heard like the phrase like adrenochrome at some point. Right. Like, right. You know, drinking like baby blood, like all that kind of stuff. Blood libel. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they go after children because they are like the purest form of like source that you could basically or or at like, least the the perception or the inherent belief exactly got it exactly right no, like, i mean i know, don't share none of that <laughs> but believe what you want like there's so many levels mm -hmm. to it but yeah yeah it's pretty dark it's like mm -hmm. very very dark um what's well, dark to me because it goes beyond guilt like let's say i'm 25 years old right and let's say I'm at Tower 12. Um, your camera's... I'm going to turn your camera back on in a minute. But let's say I'm at Tower 12, right? And I meet a girl who I think is 21, right? And, you know, she's fully developed because some girls are like that. And you find out she's like 17 or 16. Then you're like, whoa. All right, I'm out of here. And, but you... But... And, you know, your friends will tease you and people might come after you. But that's that's a perfectly innocent thing. But But we're not talking about that. We're talking about... 10 year olds we're talking about six year olds we're talking about kids like you these people these people fucking know better you, you know what i mean um you you take over i'm gonna fix your camera you, you put it on him yeah it's um like guilt is definitely you know a huge oh, wait, that was my thing that like will keep us from you know going about something like that oh no no one's camera um yeah, I'm trying not to like go too on a mad one right now. So I just right. want to like <laughs> no, but I'm just dive talk in. <laughs> I'm talking about no, but I'm talking about innocent mistakes versus people. Oh, that's, that, that's that, what was it. That's some. That's just some criminal shit outside right. the bounds. But what What makes it so inherently wrong though? Wrong, right? Is the destruction of innocence, right? That's literally the abuse of innocence for its body. Right. Like, that's that's it. This one again. This is a little bit of a stretch, outside mm -hmm. of like pedophilia but this is something that like i kind of like resonated with me when i first heard this and it makes a lot of sense of like me and miranda what, like you think real hard before what, what you say know. next like this is gonna make <laughs> people uncomfortable but i really want people to think about this because to me like this just holds like a lot of truth right and this is kind of what flipped me to totally going vegan right and i don't mean just like plant-based like to me, veganism is like a promise to try not to do harm in life, right? Like, it's not just like, oh, just, you know, eat plants and that's like, it's a commitment to do the best that you can to like keep life going at a, you know, very oh, okay. stellar rate or whatever. So what makes pedophilia inherently wrong is the destruction this is, of This is going to make lunch interesting. This uh, is going to uh, make uh, lunch interesting. <laughs> is the destruction of innocence for its body, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with eating meat. You're literally taking the life of another creature just so you can use its body. To me, the two are parallel. Because that's a thing having its own existence, it's having its own experience. Mm -hmm. And then we abruptly come in and just... Whoosh, yeah, but that's what we do it. with every life form, right? So if we're going to play judge and jury and decide which life form deserves to live and which one doesn't because it has organs and because one doesn't, then that's, like you said, that's a personal decision. As far as protecting more lives and this and that, I think we have to measure statistics on how many animals are killed for to eat vegetables versus how many animals are killed to eat meat, right? So there, there, that, that is that is an argument an argument that um, I think right now we're a hell of a lot more comfortable having well, <laughs> than... Like, remove then, remove statistics remove 
the the numbers BS, right? right? Like that we're taught to think about. We're like, well, we got to run the statistically and da da da. Like, get rid of that. Like, sure. for a second, entertain the thought of inherently is taking a life that right or wrong in terms of right. you know, like, do I really need that to eat? Yeah. Three years. Well, later? look, <laughs> I I learned about. I was deep into the rabbit hole because things started happening to me and my podcast and the way that I market myself uh, um, on because social media. Even, it's, social media is so powerful that even news corporations depend on it, right? The New York Times are like, we're leaving Twitter because Elon Musk is there. I'm like, bitch, I'll give you five days. You'll be back. You'll be back. You'll be back just like the, a, a domestic abuse victim. He smacked you and you're still coming back. You know, so, um, yeah, it, it messed with me really, really hard because I was like, this doesn't make any sense. And I'll post it. Why did I feel it doesn't make any sense? Next thing you know, my accounts removed or my accounts heavily suppressed or, or, you know, I have 32,000 subscribers and I only got like eight views. And I'm like, why aren't the, my followers, the people who chose to subscribe, not getting my videos? right mm -hmm. why is youtube steering traffic like right now it's the number of view number one view podcast and some of the episodes i still have to look for you know yeah so but like um oh, I'm, i just had for it. example the sandcast i'm not even sub subscribed to them it shows up on my wall yeah. i'm not subscribed to them the mckibbins why do i care i mean i respect the work they're doing but why do i care about what they're doing i'm doing they're doing their thing i'm doing mine why are they up on why are they on my wall every chance why are kim kardashian gets butt implants on my wall why you know what, what why are they substituting things that are inconsistent with my with what i want use one buzzword yeah <laughs> and they're like why? well yeah. was like i literally just shared a couple things that got sent my way on like instagram today and within 20 minutes mm -hmm. they were gone like deleted <laughs> yeah. it was like i didn't even post in my story then there's also the stuff that you can see but you can't post your stories like Shadow there's band, yeah. so many videos that's like you can share it but you can't throw it up on your story there's nothing worse in the world than shadow ban being shadow banned because they you don't know you think people are seeing your post so shadow banning is basically for educating people they basically suppress it so no one sees it including the sender not knowing that no one's it's just it. like you just see it and it's like yeah it's yeah okay. so we're allowing it so it's freedom of speech it's but not there. freedom of reach it's just in its own little yeah. pocket of the internet that no one else yeah. can find i mean i'd rather just be banned yeah so, yeah so you know when it changed it changed when um i youtube gave me a strike and said that i violated their their policies on the covid vaccine and said that we um, what they this is where they made the mistake they like we go by we follow the guidelines of the cdc and the world health organization so what i did was i said um attached is a link from the director of the cdc that said the vaccine no longer prevents transmission right she said this she, she, she's the director and there's a link and i said here's a link from the, the world health organization that's that actually said the boosters are boosters um basically last year's cocktail for this year's mutation yeah is not sustainable and it's not appropriate so i said here's the link to that so uh, the bottom line i said not only did i not violate your guidelines i echoed the sentiments of the guidelines and i want this strike removed and i want an apology 10 minutes later i get an email and when you get an email in 10 minutes, you just think of an AI thing, looked at it and says, we reviewed, we reviewed your appeal and still decided, right? And, you know, so either it was an AI thing or like people just stamp rejected and go play basketball. That's not what happened. 10 minutes later, we apologize. We're so sorry that this happened to you. We understand this is a frustrating process. And I'm just like... I need to picture that. I need to, you know, like screenshot it. <laughs> print this out. <laughs> yeah, because I don't, I don't ever want this email to get lost or for them to ever say it. It, it was the first apology in the history of social media uh, to to a to a pleb, to a guy that doesn't have a blue check next to his name, and that's when everything changed. And that's when I I started getting traffic back. And someone from YouTube called me, and I just had a conversation. And I said, I'm just going to ask you straight up: Did someone instruct you to ban my videos? No, that's not what happens here. I'm like. All right, you know, and I said, you understand why I'm upset? 
uh, uh, um, so we, uh, we had a conversation and they gave me guidelines like for example if we're talking about the vaccine if I'm crapping on the vaccine it's important for YouTube purposes I look at the camera and say it's safe and effective and prevents some transmission and, and keeps you out of the hospital so so I just did it good no more <laughs> so, so th- th- there are certain things where they send you notices like this is a sensitive item you know and you're not famous you ain't got a blue check next to your name we ain't gonna allow you to talk about that you know it's still happening but I don't know if, if I get to a hundred I, I get a hundred thousand subscribers, I'll get my blue check. You know, I'm not going to pay for it though. Oh, COVID. Yeah. It was stupid. It was the stupidest time in our lives. How about that? We got hoodwinked real big. It was the stupidest time in our lives. You, and you know what the sad thing is? Like Miranda was listening to me when I, I told her the sources I was using. She was like come home in when I was saying that the truth was actually, if you looked at, if you researched it, they can always say they never lied to you because the truth was there. We just never read it, <laughs> right? Like the Cochran Report and mm-hmm. the, the Mayo Clinic said that masks have done little or nothing to stop the spread. And they said that in the beginning. And it's not, it's hidden in plain sight. Oh. So the Barrington Declaration, right? Dr. J. Bhattacharya, uh, there, oh. it, there were 10,000 physicians that say, look, in case this doesn't work, we, we need an alternative form of treatment. Um, they got they got banned. There was in fact, there was an email that was leaked from the CDC director, the NIH and NAIH. That's Fauci, right? That said we have to shut them down. So there was an email com- CC communication saying that they don't like what they're saying, and not pundits, scientists. Bhattacharya is Harvard. His partner was Stanford. His partner was Oxford, right? So and so. And then when you listen to the, the Senate committee hearings, the congressional, they'll ask like the, um, like the YouTube or social media. She's like, I have a question. Where did you go to medical school? I didn't. I didn't think so. So what gives you the right? I mean, should, they're, really, it's all coming out now, mm-hmm. you know? And it's crazy because the Republicans, are, and my, I've, I grew up my whole life to think that they were the crazy party. But the, 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 uh, the, I guess the only four smart people in the entire party are, <laughs> are in charge. So, you know? Go ahead. I watched <laughs> like an exhale. a podcast. This I forget his name off the top of my head. A couple, which was like probably about six months ago or so. And he's a chiropractor who got a call from one of his colleagues and was like, hey, like, why don't you look into this? You know, because this guy was like a big name in medicine. And, you know, just kind of had his hands tied. It was about COVID. And it is not what we thought it was. Respiratory virus be damned. Yep. It is a combination of different snake venoms, conotoxins from sea snails, and starfish venom. That was administered through the water. If you look in the CDC, they have done numerous water testing sites at like the basins of like major populations leading up to the pandemic in 2020. And I remember a lot of the symptoms because I did a presentation in college for one of my biology classes classes on starfish and conotoxins from sea snails, like. And when I heard this, I'm gonna hold on to my seat for this one. The symptoms that they caused with like the respiratory failure, the like, you know, paralysis, the loss of like smells, it's literally the exact same things as if you were to get like bit by like a certain type of snake or like it's like like they're literally it's it's a uh it's a ner- they're neurotoxins which explains all the symptoms. Now remember early on in COVID there was this whole thing that came out about smokers, right? And how like they weren't getting sick. Well, your body has indigenous. Like, no wonder has, people were banned, right? Yeah. Yeah, like you telling someone to smoke cigarettes to well, get rid of COVID. Hold on. So <laughs> your body, right, has uh-huh. nicotine receptors all over it. Okay. Right. Like it, nicotine is like a master detoxifier. Right. Right. So nightshade vegetables have the highest concentration of nicotine in them so eggplants for example the highest concentration of nicotine on the planet is found in eggplants 
you know the people the whole like celery juice like yeah. craze right oh i drink my celery juice every morning i feel so good it's nicotine it's got nicotine in yes. it yes can you so, believe that can you believe that nonsense yeah. wow so nicotine's not bad for you nicotine is actually good for can you, you. look up nicotine and celery <laughs> since he's talking yeah. all this shit yeah it, it's there <laughs> it's a real thing so it's like stuff in cigarettes is not the nicotine in it that's bad for you if you remember back in like i think it was the 70s or the 80s cigarette companies came out with light cigarettes right they couldn't get people addicted oh, to them it right it, it wasn't oh. because they weren't addicted to the nicotine there was no chemical in like the paper or that was added to the plant that like made people addicted right right so guess what also binds to nicotine receptors in your body these toxins mm. well guess what's 30 times more like has a 30 times stronger like bonding to those nicotine receptors what is it is nicotine from like naturally occurring like celery eggplants like so it literally like naturally occurring nicotine kicks anything that is sitting in that like receptor binding site out it's like dude this is my house get the fuck out right so that's why like i've met a couple people who have long to have had long term like COVID. i met this older woman at the farmer's market in mission viejo when i was living there and like this woman was buying like not her but somebody else was like buying all these eggplants and i was like oh hey like like the nicotine in those like you know i just had to make some smart ass comment because that's just how i am and this woman this older woman next to me and she's like 75 years old and you know looking at her your brain would be like oh karen like oh. you know she might be totally like whatever right she's like oh yeah like nicotine hold, hold gum nicotine <laughs> gum cured me of my long-term covid symptoms she's like i just chewed a couple pieces for a couple days and my like whatever she had she like I forget what her symptoms were. She's mm -hmm. like, it just went away. How dare you, you son of a bitch. You know we're on YouTube and you know that nicotine <laughs> does not cure COVID. There's only <laughs> one cure for COVID, people. It's the vaccine. And if you haven't gotten your eighth <laughs> booster, you're an individualist. Do you understand me? You're a grandma killer. <laughs> Sorry. Do you like the bloop of the vegetables yes, in between that? <laughs> Check between it out. Nicotine out. found in nightshade Tomatoes family too, of plants. Tomatoes too, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Cauliflower, potatoes. Yeah. I'm just covering my bases from this absolute truthful charlatan. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, the reason why I found out, and this is irony because we're going to get into historical context. In fact, I have a six minute clip because I have a show called Undivided with Wendy mm -hmm. that that was called Not For Me But For Thee. And it was three years of what of how we discovered what was going on and who was actually following the guidelines and not and now you're calling bullshit because you have a class structure that's not following the same guideline as you. Yeah. Right? So Jimmy Dore, he's a political comedian, right? He got vaccine injured. So I took interest in the vaccines and the why through him. Uh, Joe Rogan, right, was uh, vilified from the media. Uh, um, CNN, all of the, the mainstream news media said that he was suggesting you take like horse, ivermectin. Horse and all that kind of stuff. Well, again, ivermectin works through nicotine receptors. That's yes. why it was effective. Well, not just that. Basically, it generated my interest because I was a huge follower of Joe Rogan, and he had someone named Sanjay Gupta, who mm. was like CNN's uh, medical rock star. And he's like, why is your network saying that I'm taking horse dewormer? Why are they saying I'm taking horse? He says, I can afford the real drug, motherfucker. Yeah, the river you blindness, know? right? Was and, that it cured and, in Africa or whatever? Um, not, just, not just that. It they was got a, like a Nobel it, Peace Prize, didn't it? It won the Nobel yeah. Peace Prize <laughs> for, for um, river blindness and for... Um, other things and it's on the world health organization's list of essential medicines yeah so the same way americans have asked tylenol in their, in their whatever everyone all over the world has ivermectin in their medicine cabinet and it generated this interest because at the time the united states was vilifying it as this evil drug that's hurtful and this and that and i'm like can you give an, um, an example where ivermectin hurt someone Not, and then and historically you can't give one you can't give one example of the uh, no no allergic reaction, no nothing. So it was one of these things where the media portrayed it like you're not a y'all are not a horse. Don't be taking horse pills. Y'all ain't a horse, right? Horse, 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 horse. What happened was ivermectin, a human drug, they found that worked well as a horse deworm. So they switched it saying it's a horse pill that yeah, sometimes humans take. Yeah. When really it's a human medication that 
worked on yeah. horses. We found it used for it in horses too. <laughs> and if you listen to their language and the way they did Joe Rogan, they said he's saying he's telling you to use a medication used for horses. So they chose their words carefully so they couldn't get sued. Right? But some of them just said, You're not a horse, you're not a horse. And yeah. the whole time he's like he didn't think anyone would come after him for that. And you know what? You know what's you know what's worse? Because they had an e a contract with ESPN, and it's Disney. You know, Disney's trying to be all politically correct, and they told Dana. They said they don't, we don't, we don't want Joe Rogan work, doing color commentary for the UFC anymore. And you know, what Dana said, "I resign." And they're like, "No, whoa, wait." He said, no. Dana's like, no. Dana said, "No, I quit. You mess with my guys, you mess with me. I'm loyal to my guys, and my guys are loyal to me." And I think the I point Dana I was trying White. to make is sometimes if you want change, you need people in positions of power that have the balls right that starts with those people that can use their power to feel another way so so very very interesting year so well the, I, my interest sucks. in the vaccine was because my favorite one of my favorite political comedians got vaccine injured my interest in ivermectin is because joe rogan so i'm seriously i have a podcast of all about podcasts i'm minding my own business but then when people i start following um get affected by this and then I didn't draw any conclusions. I just asked why. And all of a sudden, why asking why is, is, is asking, not making my own conclusions. You will say nothing or ask nothing and you will like it. Yes. But no, if, some, if I drew my own conclusions, I understand people say you're not a doctor. But if I ask why, why would why would someone ask me you're a doctor? I'm like, dude, I'm supposed to ask my doctor why. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> So here's the reason why, and I, by the way, I haven't seen a doctor in three years. Yeah, I just, I, I just don't, don't, I don't, I, I think don't, it's been like eight. I don't know, but I don't, when G Gavin Newsom handed out a mandate, which by the way, got struck, struck by the Supreme Court, that if any practicing physician um, treats, treats people with ivermectin or speaks against the vaccine, they lose their license. So picture that, like you go to law, undergrad school, you go to medical school, you take out loans. We, by the time you're done paying off these loans, you're 79 years old. And this guy's, guy's like, I'll take your license. I'm not saying doctors are bad people, but self-preservation is, no, the, thing. is yeah. the essence of sanity. <laughs> Sigmund Freud said that, and I believe that shit. Just the preservation of self. So it's not like, because Jim McNamee, my guy, was like, you're trying to say your doctor's a bad person. I'm like, no, I'm just saying that if it comes down to his ass or mine. He's right? going to save his own. Yeah. Well, dude, we saw. I'm not, and there's, and, oh, and by the way, there's some evil doctors, too. How about that? Yeah. There's some evil ones out there, too. That, that... Well, it was like, we saw it in the restaurant industry, too. There's through, like, health inspectors and stuff. Like, they're not bad people. But no. it's like, you know, someone didn't want to, like, close. Because, like, yo, like, we've got people working here. They've got mm -hmm. kids. They've got families. Like, you know, some so, people have, like, illegal immigrants. So, like, they need to work and make money. You know so, what I'm saying? Like. Yep. So it's... my alarm came three threefold. Jimmy Dore vaccine injured wanted to talk about it he got heavily suppressed joe rogan had this drug that when he got covid by the way cnn changed the color on this video made him look green so when he had the covid he's talking about how covid i'm, I'm he's like I'm, I'm using monoclonal antibodies i got um z pack you know zithromatrix mm -hmm. which is an antibiotic to prevent the replication uh, um and i'm using ivermectin so cnn actually changed the color on the video made him look green like he was dying <laughs> So, uh, uh, yeah, and they showed the two videos next to each other, like the real video and the other video. And I'm like, that you guys are bad. So, and the third alarm was in New York City, 70,000 medical employees got fired for refusing to take the vaccine. Now, if this is such a great drug, one, why do you have to mandate it? And two... Why are people who work in the field not willing to take it? 70,000 charlatans? Uh, 70,000 people that are indoctrinated by QAnon people? 70,000 people who, who don't get it? We are medical professionals who might actually think for themselves. That's like me being in a restaurant and, and um, someone gives me chicken wings. I'm like, could you try one of these wings? And they're like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> no, you eat this wing right now. <laughs> Nah, I'm good. Well, that's like me as like I'm not you know I can sell a steak, but I'm not gonna eat it. But I'm like yeah. I don't think you should eat that. But your choice, you know. And then <laughs> so what happened was 
everyone that was willing to argue with me is like, Do you, can you find a doctor that says what you're saying? And when I find it, they say that's just one person. Uh, I have a thousand. And I'm like, you're making a bandwagon fallacy. It's, you and I are using a lot of terms, so we got to educate our, uh, our audience who may not get this. Bandwagon fallacy is when you take a, a premise that's popular and saying that it's right just because more people are saying it. First of all, if I, have a, if I have a pile of shit on this desk and you put more shit on top of it, it's still shit. Pile of shit. <laughs> it's still shit. <laughs> so, uh, or I'll, I'll give you another example. If I'm at an NBA game and I want to know, I want to have a conversation with people about basketball, and I see five professionals sitting over there, and I see LeBron James sitting over there, that's five people. That's LeBron James. I'm gonna go talk to LeBron. So it's not about quantity as much as it is about quality. And even if it was about quantity, we'll never know because they were um, they were muted. How will we how will we how will we get a fair count when you're when the people? And by the way, a lot of those tweets are still up. Well, this a, is the, a lot of those lies that, you're, that mm -hmm. we, we, we're not t calling them lies, but a lot of the supposed lies, uh, um, those aren't banned. Those are still up. Rachel Maddow said the vaccine stops with every, um, no, the, the virus stops with every vaccinated person. So you can't get it. And if you can't give it, you, or if you can't get it, then you can't give it. That tweet's still up. Yeah, which is mind boggling. Yeah. Which, by the way, it should be up. You know why? Because the vaccine is safe and effective. And, and it prevents severe disease and prevents you from being hospitalized. So, good for you, Rachel Maddow. What the, what, in fact, what are we even talking about here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's, so the, there's always these tell signs that invite the rabbit hole mentality. Well, it's like for me, after the first couple of weeks, I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. Like, is everyone that works in the medical industry an idiot no no they are not why are people not on the news every morning be like hey there's this pandemic going around these are the things that you can do like you know eat more fruit eat more vegetables stop drinking alcohol you know like don't do drugs like the basic shit of like just how to be a healthier person should have been being put out there constantly but instead, the answer was yes. just, you know, this one, here's this a pill, one drug. here's a drug, here's a yeah. shot, you know, and it's just like, okay, we're just in the consumerism wheel yet again. Mm -hmm. And like, finally, the, the part that upset me was it wasn't that um, I had a problem with a, an experimental drug as much as I had a problem with saying someone saying you have to take it. The anti-vax people got put in the same category as anti-mandate people. There's a people, a bunch of people out there that doesn't believe in any vaccines. You might be one of them because you're not with knowledge is power. Um, I don't know. I don't care. But there's a group of people that are like, if you want it, take it. I prefer not to take it. That got lumped into this category of conspiracy nuts like Robert F. Kennedy. Uh, has was yeah. was was like that when people don't even know his entire family's vaccinated by the way yeah. his entire family got the shot yeah. <laughs> all right so um and by the way by the way we're on eight boosters right now yeah no i know it's crazy so when i took my wife to the hospital like are you are you updated on your covid vaccines and i i actually said how many we how many we're up to right now and everyone just is quiet no one <laughs> no one can answer the question i said eight seven <laughs> eight <laughs> you know uh, um and and that's so here's my qualm my qualm is let's say miranda's with pfizer and miranda comes out with this drug and it's an experimental drug and they're like we're trying some stuff and and you can take it or leave it if you want to take it take it if you don't you don't i'm i'm actually cool with that uh, um some people make a decision not to the anti-vaxxers go their way the pro-vaxxers go their way and the people in the middle make up their own mind right but that's not what happened here what happened was if you don't take this vaccine, you're going to give it to your grandmother. You're a baby killer. You're a grandma killer. You're an individualist. You're, and you're um, going to lose your job. You're going to lose your job. <laughs> Cable news anchors. Remember remember that, that clip we played with, um, um, no, you weren't here. Cable news anchors uh, lecturing you. Oh, you, like, you and know, like it's all uh, the um, same. Like if you just voice them over each yeah. other, it's like the same scripts. No, but the amount of moral preening oh, yeah, was, that, that like, happened that that shamed you for into taking this thing and let this be a lesson to us all because you know right the um if you shame someone it's hard to come back from that to to admit that you were wrong because you were such an asshole about it 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, right on social media. Uh, I don't, I don't care if you're my friend. If you don't get the vaccine, you're not my friend. Unfriend me. I'm just like, that's. Uh, am I wrong? That's what happened. That's what happened. That was 100%, this, yeah. this, this thing, and I was one of them because I was armed with the same information as them, I, and I. That's why I forgive them. I, I forgive them because if I were armed with the same information with them, I would feel as strongly uh, about it as them. And and but again, the more you preen, it's really hard to come back from it and say you were wrong if you're if you're a fucking idiot about this. An experimental vaccine from a from a drug company notorious for fucking. Some shady shit. <laughs> but from from a guy heading this up who fucked up the AIDS pa- <laughs> pand- epidemic royally. You ever seen Dallas Buyers Club? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that guy was Fauci. No, I know. <laughs> oh yeah. So I know how. So um, listen, but at the end of the day, everything I'm saying is bullshit against this vaccine that is safe and effective. <laughs> All right, and 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 again, you 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 over there, my host, babe, dog dog killer. You kill dogs too, oh doggy gosh. killer. Shut up and get. You su- knew that one would hit home too. Yeah, <laughs> that was personal. Oh <laughs> she said, "You gone too far." I draw yeah. the line, dude. Are you updated? Is is uh, on your eighth booster yet? Who got the, who got number eight yet? No, okay. No more. <laughs> no, I got the first two, and then I got COVID. And from what I read in my research, because that's how you do your research it's called reading that if you had the vac uh the virus you you're you have a stronger antibody system that helps you um fight mutations yeah it's like before i knew what it actually right was but like, if you get I too had many, already like gotten yeah. it so mm-hmm. i was like well there's no point in me going to get a shot now because i already got it so right you know whatever but think about all of the people who were banned well, it's people they didn't like said I was okay. Like Marjorie Taylor Green, Green, I don't like that woman, right? <laughs> like, look, Joe Biden went on on CNN and said that if you get the vaccine, you won't get COVID, and she tweeted that's not co- correct. You can get COVID, and she got she's the one that got banned, you know. And then everyone that got the vaccine got COVID anyway. Yeah. Tom Barrison, who was a jur- journalist, was was labeled this enemy of the people, you know, and. Uh, Dr. Malone. Yep. Oh, the yeah. Guy who, Malone. Invented, um, mm-hmm. who invented the technology. Who is, still, is like, you're not even using it right. Yeah. He's like, you're not using my technology mm-hmm. how it was intended to be used. Peter everyone's, McCulloch. And it's like, oh, yeah, no, you know what you're talking about. Wait, wait, hold on. You don't, like, people were literally just okay with being like, mm-hmm. yeah, this guy invented it, but he doesn't know what he's talking about. I was like, did you hear what you just said? <laughs> All right. <laughs> like, here's. here's all right, for the people that that like looking down a rabbit hole, you have to check all your boxes first, okay? You have to you have to look down a rabbit hole properly. First, is there a rabbit? Is there a rabbit? <laughs> Second, how long's your neck? <laughs> no, but here's some of the tell signs. The people that the public are vilifying up until the moment that they said something controversial, if you look at their past, they're the best in their field. Malone, you know, co-invented the technology, right? Dr. Peter McCulloch is the most car- published physician in the history of, of, of journal publications. He's a cardiologist. He spoke out against it. Uh, Jay Bhattacharya is from Harvard, you know, scientist at Harvard. So, so if you look at all of these people's history, they were the most respected people in their field until this. Until there was one determining event that changed everything. Right. So that that's So for everyone that likes looking down a rabbit hole, make sure... You know, at least there's someone with a pattern of consistency. Right? It's, it's one of those things, too, of just like when something doesn't make sense to you, mm-hmm. like it's so much easier. Like ignorance is a choice, right? Like it's so much easier to just not know stuff because it's scary because you're just like, you know what? Like, I'm just going to leave it alone because I don't want to know. But guess well, what? Stupidity is a choice. Ignor- well, ignorance is, is involuntary. Be, well, by being ignorant, though you're inherently giving away like consent in your own personal power yeah. because you're basically saying, okay, I'm okay with not knowing something that I'm going to blindly trust that what we perceive as an expert is going to give me the proper advice. That's different from ignorance though. Well, is that's, it though? That's, no, uh, protected ignorance is stupidity. When someone already advised you and you're still kind of set in your ways, you don't want to know, or you, you're, you're listening to them, but still set in the way outside of actual evidence, that's just stupid. I can forgive ignorance. I have, I have a, 
let's just say I have a lower tolerance level for stupidity. I don't, I don't say, I'm not going to say I can't tolerate stupidity. I can't, I can tolerate, I tolerate stu- stupidity every day. I do stupid. I bring the stupid with me, you know, but, but, right. um, yeah. But you get what I'm saying? Like, 100%. like you're by choosing not, especially something like that important that's like happening all over the world. That's like, this is a huge life event that's affecting everyone. Like you should really know something about mm-hmm. it to choose not to do your own research to me is like silly it's, it's willful it's, ignorance. It's, it's willful ignorance right yeah. like it's it's a conscious choice to just not know hold on what are we doing for time there we're at 209 209 all right that thing goes up to 226 uh, um well i have something a general rule if you don't know something if you're not sure about something you can you have two choices this is your dichotomy you can do research and you can research it and you can understand it. Or if there's only X amount of hours in a day and you ain't got time to be doing all that shit, you have to find someone that you trust that's learned it on that. So, and if you make choice B, and if you go hard in the paint, arguing with people based on that person from choice B, you have to be re- apologetic on your fucking knees saying, I'm sorry if they're wrong, right? Because doing your own research, you're gonna you're gonna look at different things. You're gonna come in your own research with a bias, because we're we're human. We're not we're, you know. So if so if you're a person that believes in no conspiracy, you're gonna come in that research with that bias. And if you're a person that believes in everything is a conspiracy, you're gonna come in with that bias. And if you're able to, if you're capable of of doing your research and having a saying, my mind is open to change. In both directions, which is really hard because once you've gone too far this way and too far that way. Coming back is not exactly yeah. an easy yeah. task. No. Yeah, they're the most dangerous people in the world. The the person that believes in nothing and the person that believes in everything. Equally as dangerous in my opinion. So, um, and that, but that's what I do. If Whatever I don't know, I'll call I'll call up someone I know. I'm like, what do you know about this? And I and I will defer to them because I trusted I oh, trust them and you know. and it's their wheelhouse. You know, like if I want to know more about MMA, I'm a I'm a call my boy Timmy B. He's an MMA commentator. Mm-hmm. He's also a former fighter, and he's you know he's doing small promotions. He's going to be on a podcast next week for the UFC 300. So, well, um, see, but to me, that's the way that like you know getting back to that you know like oneness, right? Of like. Mm-hmm. There are certain pieces of information that I'm really, really good with. There's certain things that you're good with. There's certain things Miranda's really good with. Like, we're Just all like one. We're all like one piece of the mm-hmm. same universal consciousness, just like individuated. So we're all different like snippets of it, right? So yeah, it, it, it takes all of us to like collectively make everything work. So yeah, we're gonna have to find the other people that have the, the gifts, the skills, the knowledge that we're seeking, right? Like we don't go through life alone, you know? No. So it's like, it's through others, it's through experience, it's through all those things that, you know, like we learn and grow. Like, and then like, again, we, we have to like, like, but again, like you can see how it can work both ways, right? Of like giving your power and trusting blindly to people that, you know, only have like profit or like malintent or you know what they may perceive as a good intention but really isn't good for like the collective or the people who just like to have like a genuine loving caring intention that just just want nothing but good for like everyone and everything once you learn to discern between like those two types of people like it just becomes much easier just like oh yeah like that's definitely who i would go to and you know you like you stop just believing everything that just like comes to you just because you know it came out of the TV. i don't even uh, when miranda came in i i told i showed her the news outlet that i watch because the news outlet one's a libertarian one's leans left and there's going to be bias whatever because mm-hmm. maybe they might still be looking for jobs at msnbc and this and that but if they haven't torn each other's throats out uh, um or if no, sorry, I t- I'd say to the other one. If they, if they if they get along, it's not a channel I want to watch. They do they do lay into each other, you know, and and I and I do like that. And at least, I I guess I just want someone to show me what happened, and I'll decide. No, uh, to show me the the facts, and I decide for myself what happened. Yeah, as opposed to them, um, the, doing the reverse. Like deciding what happened and you don't even know the fact you don't even know the story they're yeah. deciding what happened and you don't even know the story so so i i i, I like rising 
Um, I liked Kim Iverson. She left Rising. I like Jimmy Dore. He's a pothead comedian because um, those seem to be the wise men these days, right? Mm-hmm. Um, who, by the way, tell you don't do not take advice from me, right? So, which is why I like Joe, Joe Rogan. I'm like, the, you're mad at him because he gets more viewership than all the other news that networks put together. Well, he's a, a guy who specific, yeah, but a guy who specifically said, "Don't come to me for medical advice." It's like I just have medical professionals on my show yeah. who give killer medical advice, but I don't. But they 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 miss his function. His right. function is not to bring you the news. His he's function is to have a conversation. Yeah, he's just thought provoking. Yeah, and and you know what happens in these conversations? We raise questions uh, that, that all everyone can answer together, and that's the point of his podcast. It's the point of this podcast because experts are not going to raise the, a question if they already know the answer to. Yeah. These, these are, but you know, you understand what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Just having a conversation generates a, a question. We we might get wrong that we'll leave out there, and if we give it, we get it wrong, and now someone's talking about it, and now the public knows what's right. Like if Joe Rogan gets something wrong, good, fine. Some make, of the let's make that news. Best, but don't cancel. Don't, yeah, but you of, don't cancel someone. You know, over it. yeah, but, but some of the best things have come out of mistakes. No doubt, I was one. That's how I ended up here. Gotcha. Mom and dad fucked up. (laughs) (laughs) Jeez. That's, that's, I don't know. That's always a distant second in a girl with daddy issues. (laughs) Hey, don't talk about me like that. (laughs) (laughs) She says, I know why you said that because I'm in a room. (laughs) Don't call me out. (laughs) So let's do um, bad mommy issues. It's all right. So let's go split screen. Gotcha. Um, and let's do lightning rounds and we're out of here. We're going to get, get some food. You can come too, Miranda. You're already over my two-hour pay limit. Maybe I can buy you, pay you two hours and go lunch. <laughs> oh, are is. we good? Okay. Yeah, let's go. Um, let's reset the clock. Yeah. Or just scroll. Oh, it doesn't like me. Come back. Do that. Yeah, just do that and press pause. Okay. 59 is good. All right, go. All right. Starting from the top. Who's who's going first? Torin? Sure. Whoever, yeah. All right. Favorite comedian? Bill Burr. Bill Burr, my man. I got Dave Chappelle. <laughs> Last good book you read? Uh, Becoming Supernatural. Um, Red Pill Revolution. It's right behind you. Last good movie you watched? Sound of Freedom. Easily. Mm. Lee Camp deserved Best uh, best best Supporting Actor. Pass, because I don't remember the last we'll movie I watched. We'll do a skip. Yeah. <laughs> Marvel or DC? Make my Marvel. DC. Wolverine. <laughs> Pool or beach? Beach. Beach. Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter? Lord of the Rings. Lord Jeez, of the Rings. Nobody gets this right. <laughs> Bur- <laughs> Bourbon, vodka, or tequila? You don't drink anymore. Bourbon. Vodka. <laughs> Favorite sport outside of volleyball? Basketball. Mixed martial arts. Favorite action star growing up? I, I said Arnold every time, but this, I'm, I'm going Bruce Willis now. Uh, Busty Snipes. Oh! <laughs> Passenger 57! <laughs> you like that shit? <laughs> Blade. It was Blade for me that did it. Oh, Blade? Yeah. Nice. Wow. You guys made one. it just in time. All right, Torin, Um, What's your IG? Anyone want to know what, you, what you've been up to? Uh, it's... Maybe, get, maybe get some yoga from the man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be some... I just started actually using my Instagram account finally. Uh, it's... Uh, Beachy T or like Beachy underscore underscore T six seven nine. I'll put it up in the beginning. Anyway, yeah. On the intros. It's somewhere on there. You can find yeah. the six seven nine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure which was a better conversation. That's why I feel like this is a, a I, I leave here with sort of a win. So you came on before of conversation. And, yeah, because that was that last one. <laughs> that that last one caught fire, right? Yeah. I'm like, dude, I just had Trevor Crab and Torin got more viewership than he did. How did that happen? You I'm know. prettier. Um, yes. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I'm different between you and Trevor's. I'm a fan of Trevor. <laughs> I'm a fan. I'm not a fan of Torin. No, no I'm your a friend shit. of Torin. No, I'm your my brother. Yeah. My brother, man. All right, Torin. We're out here for all of you at home. It was an absolute for all of pleasure. You on our, for all of you on your desktop, for all of you on your iPad and iPhones. Who? I messed that up. For all of you on your <laughs> desktop, who runs the world? Old school, baby! So my man, Torin Jeffries. From Miranda Gagne, the hostess oh, with the right. mostest. I'm Jason DeBiss. This is episode 202 of the Option Podcast. We are... We're out.
Come check out the Option Podcast on OptionDB.com. It's also available on iTunes and Spotify and on YouTube under the NY Varsity Sports Handle. You're going to love what you hear.